ProjectWise Workflow Rules Engine and BS 1192 Business Process Template. The agenda for today is the ProjectWise Workflow Rules Engine. Some ideas for using the Rules Engine with other ProjectWise services such as Bentley Automation Service and Project Sharing Cloud Service. The British Standard 1192 template and how that applies to ProjectWise and a working example of the template within the ProjectWise environment. So let's start by talking about the ProjectWise Workflow Rules Engine. The Rules Engine is a capability for helping organisations enforce document lifecycle based work processes. It provides a flexible set of actions that can be applied to documents during workflow state changes. It was previously known as a Document Action Manager, now known as a Workflow Rules Engine. It is installed automatically with ProjectWise Administrator and it's an install option when you install ProjectWise Explorer for the client. If it's not installed, then the Rules Engine will not be enabled for that client. It replaces the standard workflow commands and enables non-linear workflows. The diagram on the right gives you an example of a non-linear workflow. This one is specific to the BS1192 template. Each operation triggers a rule with a confirmation dialog. When the user hits the Approve button, a dialog will pop up and say, is this what you want to do? Each rule consists of one or more sequential actions. And a rule is not run unless the conditions are satisfied. To give you an example, there are three things that need to happen to create a unique rule. So we need to have a workflow. We need to have the document in a state and we need an operation to happen. So with these three different criteria, a unique rule is created and that rule, when it's triggered, will set off a set of actions. And these actions will happen in the background. Uh, they're not all going to be noticeable to the end user, but they're doing important things to enforce uh, document integrity and to provide metadata for that document. So the example here, we've got the workflow set, uh, we've got a document that's in the work in progress state, and the operation that's been done by the user is approve. When this happens, the rule is run and the following actions that you can see on the screen take place. In addition to this, the rules engine can be used to enhance automation processes. So take for example, using the rules engine in conjunction with Bentley Automation Service and also the project sharing service. So when a document goes from work in progress to a shared state, at that point, the automation service creates a PDF or an iModel rendition of the document and places it within a certain folder. That folder is then a nominated folder to be shared by the sharing service. So what we get is an automated process for taking a document and sharing it and pushing it to uh, an end user. They can automatically receive these documents on their mobile device and be sure that they've got the most up-to-date version. They can then do their design review, markup, etc., and feed that information back into the project. So next I want to talk about the BS1192 template itself and how we apply that to ProjectWise, apply that to a data source and use it to, to enforce processes. With the template we, just, we deliver a, a folder structure, access lists and um, a document coding uh, wizard. So the folder structures, as well as keeping things neat and tidy, it actually informs the document coding process. So it's quite important for how things are uh, set up uh, within the data source. By default, you've got multiple different disciplines, and within each discipline, you've got six folders, 2D drawing, 2D model, 3D model, correspondence, model rendition, and report. So each discipline will have the same folders. This is not fixed. You can change this if you need to. If you don't need to have a drainage engineer folder, you can take that out. Um, but what it does is to provide a repeatable and easy setup for, for new projects. If we go into ProjectWise Administrator, we can have a look at the user lists uh, and we can see how we, how we set up new users on a project and provide them permissions automatically. So for each discipline, we've got an admin user list and a work in progress user list. Each has different permissions and they have different permissions uh, based on their discipline as well. So for example, um, the administrate the architectural administrator can do admin tasks within his discipline folder but if he goes to a different folder goes to mechanical engineering for example he will not be able to create documents in there uh, will not be able to do approvals in there so this is how we use the access rights to provide very powerful and very robust permissions the other thing that the template provides that's very important is the environment. So these attributes, they take a lot of the, the onus away from the content creator for having to name documents correctly. 
you can see here the file number or the document name has been created based on these pieces of information. With that, let's jump into the demonstration. So what you see on my screen right now is uh, three different instances of ProjectWise Explorer all logged in as different users. So on the left, we've got the structural drafter, the structural work in progress user. In the middle is the structural administrator, the person that's responsible for approvals. And then on the right hand side, we've got a work in progress user from a different discipline. In this case, it's the architectural work in progress drafter. And we're looking at the structural engineering 3D model folder. Within there, we've got, we've got some files there already. And you'll notice that the both the structural users have the same view of the folder. But the architect, if he goes to the same folder, all he can see is the shared and the published documentation. He can't see any work in progress. That's, that's the first example of how the access list defines what we can see within a folder. I'm going to start off as the structural drafter and I want to create a new document. So because this is my discipline, I've got the permissions to create a document within this folder. It takes me to the wizard, it's asking me, am I sure that this is the folder I want to use? Uh, yes, that is correct. And I'm going to use a model seed. So we go to our seed folder. We're going to create a, a DGN for the basis of our design. Okay, so the wizard already knows some stuff about who we are it knows and it is going to create our document name for us so the document code is down here pw1 so this is taken from the project name project code I just tell it that I'm the structural and then I can have a multiple level 3d model m3 means purely that it's 3d model and s for structural so I hit generate and it will give me a unique number to put on the end. So that's my document code done. I really don't need to know anything to, to fill that out. Next I can put in uh, a title. Then we put in a revision note, a design status. It always starts at S0 and a revision version is P0 1.1. So we'll hit next on that. And it's going to create that document for us. So here's our new document. We've got the pencil icon. That means that we've got permissions to check it out and work on it. You can see it's also showing up in, in the administrator's view. But as someone from a different discipline, it doesn't actually show up in our in our view yet. So if we if we go to another disciplines folder, we're not going to see any of their work in progress. Again, this is as designed, so that work in progress is only visible and usable by each discipline themselves. So our structural drafter checks the drawing out, does some work on it, finishes the drawings, very happy with it. Uh, and next we need to say let's send it for checking. So proof model for checking, yes. Oh dear, we've got an error. So you remember we looked at the spreadsheet in, uh, in one of the initial slides and it had actions and condition checks. So one of the condition checks is to look at the attribute, some of the different attributes, and check that they're not empty. And if they're empty, it's going to fail. So in this case, it has failed on the scale attribute. So if we, we open the properties, and sure enough, we haven't filled out scale, we haven't filled out sheet size. So let's fill those out and uh, close that. So we need to change state and approve. Let's try again. Approve for checking. Okay, and it's now gone into the content check stage. So as the drafter, it's now read-only for me. I can't, I can't change that because I've sent it for approval. I've sent it to the next state. Um, but as the administrator, um, I'm the person that's responsible for doing the content check. So it uh, has a different uh, status icon. So now I'm the person responsible for checking it. I have to open it up, check the line weights, check the levels, it all makes sense. Uh, I might be using CAD QA to do that. Ultimately, 
the ball is in my court, I need to deal with that. At any of these states as well, we can set up a messaging agent within ProjectWise to send it a, an email uh, to the relevant user that they need to come and do something about this. So we check the document, we've actually found a, there's a couple of issues with it. So we're going to send it back to our drafter just to revise it. Uh, so I'm going to go to change state and revise. So you get the, the pop-up dialog is telling us what's happening. Um, it's not a proof of sharing, reject and increase minor version. Yes. Okay, so once I do that, it's going to go back to work in progress. You can see it back to work in progress. And now it's, it's uh, available again to the, to the drafter to change. So he's got it back. If we go and look at the revision version, so the only thing really that's changed is the version. So instead of P01.1, it's P01.2. So we can see it's been rejected, failed content check, uh, and the date. So we've uh, we've got some notes from uh, about why it's failed. We're going to change that. We're happy. We're happy that we've we've done made all the changes now. We're going to send it again for for checking. The administrator gets it back. Let's see. That's brilliant. Um, okay. We then need to change the design status. If we're going to approve it, it's not uh, S0 anymore. It's going to be S1 for coordination or S3 for internal review and comment. Again, this is relevant to BS1192. Uh, you may have different design statuses, uh, different workflow stages that you want to, to implement. Uh, and ProjectWise can accommodate any of that. So let's put it as S3 suitable for review and comment. Save that. And I'm just going to leave this up on the screen while we approve. So approve model for sharing. So this stage is sending it from from the content checker to the approver. So we had an email notification that a change of status has occurred on the following document. We've got time, what's changed, and the file. So this user is also the approver, so they they're going to check it and make sure that's good to go. And we're going to do change state and approve. So ProjectWise just gives us another little pop up. Uh, are you sure you want to share this? So we say yes, please. Let's share. And you notice all of, all this while we've got no visibility from any other discipline. They they can't see what's going on until this point. So now we can see a few things have happened. We have a shared document which is read only. We also have a superseded work in progress document. And it's reflected on the uh, for the work in progress user as well. Shared and superseded work in progress. What we also have now is a revision version which has changed to P01. So when it becomes a shared document, it loses the decimal. So even if it was P01.150, uh, it loses that and becomes P01. And now, as another discipline, we can go in and we can see that drawing and we can reference it into our own as a read-only document. So only when it hits the shared state can it then be used for coordination with other disciplines. So again, at this point, we could go back and revise it and it would become uh, P02. So we've had some issues with coordination with other disciplines. We need to revise it. Um, so at that point, we can go change state and revise. I won't go through all of that right now, but that is possible. Assuming it's all OK, then the next step is to do change state and approve. And this is the final step. So once we've approved it for publication, then that is a contractually binding document uh, and ready to go to the client. So sent for approval, and then we need the final approval to happen um, by whoever's set up to be that, that approver. In our case, the administrator for this dis discipline has got all of the rights for this. Now, again, it's asking me to add in some further information. Okay, we have to set it for construction record.
worth bearing in mind as well that all of these attributes can be transferred into a title block in the drawing um, using the project wise attribute exchange uh, so there we have it that's our final our final published documentation so that's how we move a document through the BS1192 workflow using the project wise workflow rules engine on a project wise data source ensuring that we've got full document integrity for handover to construction and operations. So just to summarize what we've talked about today, we started talking about the workflow rules engine and how it's there to enforce document lifecycle processes. I gave you an example of how we can use the rules engine with some other project-wise services, with the automation service, with the project sharing service. And we talked about the BIS 1192 template, and it's, it's by no means the only way you can use the rules engine, but it's a really great example of how we use the rules engine uh, within project-wise environment. And then a work, working example of how we push, uh, create a document in work in progress and push it through to a published state. Thank you for watching.